Good afternoon, good morning to everyone. And again, we appreciate the time that you're all spending here with us this afternoon. Uh, and as again, my name is Simon Bolt. I'm the Senior Regional Director here for V Technologies. <clears throat> and I'm joined here by Stacy Sutz uh, from Pitney Bowes um, to talk a little bit uh, to all of you about some um, special savings that we can uh, now offer to you regarding um, some discounts through the uh, post office and helping uh, with some possible transportation savings as we approach this holiday season uh, that we're about to uh, venture on. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to kick off this presentation. Um, my move. Okay, here we go. Um, so quick agenda, right? We're going to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, why go to, you know, the cloud, right? And you're probably hearing this term out there quite a bit with different business applications. And Starship has had their cloud solution out now really for over four years. Um, and we're very proud of it. Um, and it, it's, it's working tremendously well for a lot of different users. Um, we'll talk about um, kind of really the expenses um, and the true cost of ownership when it comes to an on-prem instance that you may be running in today um, versus what a cloud instance may look like if you move to tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the features comparing the two, um, kind of what you have today, what you can have tomorrow. Um, we're going to also talk and mention something regarding the OAuth updates that you all been hearing from us uh, for probably most of the year now through UPS um, and some new deadlines that now are, are set out there for those of you who haven't authenticated yet. Um, we definitely have some new deadlines for all of you to adhere by. So we're going to talk about that for a quick minute. Um, and then I'm going to kind of turn it over to Stacy, talk to all of you about some of the uh, new savings that we can now offer to our, our customers who migrate into our cloud solution. Um, so we're proud of these uh, new incentives and I'll have her speak to a little bit about that. Um, and then we'll go into kind of the uh, interface a little bit just to kind of show you a couple snippets uh, of what the new um, application can do. Um, some of the new uh, features you have available to you, especially our desktop users out there today. Um, and we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about some next steps and then Q&A. So all of our questions we'll get to at the end of this. Uh, we should have enough time here to get through most of those. So um, why cloud, right? So as we look at, you know, kind of this new uh, age we're all, you know, in now, everything moving up into the cloud with different applications, you know, um, really Starship is really basically all to be giving you um, anytime, anywhere access, right? So right now, um, as you're working off a local on-prem instance, right, and, you know, having to be remoting into that, you know, machine in the office, this allows you to be truly in the cloud, accessing a dedicated URL, Right, traveling in the in, at home in the office wherever you might be, accessing that information in real time. Um, the ability of having you know us provide 24/7 monitoring. Um, all of our information runs up in Microsoft Azure. Um, so again, our team behind the scenes is looking at that very closely um, to ensure that you know the outages are minimal at best, um, and then making sure that uptime is continuing to be at, at the all-time high that it runs on today so we don't have any interruptions in shipping. Um, obviously, by going into a cloud atmosphere, you have basically the option of reducing your IT spend, right? And what I mean by that is really, we don't have all of these upgrades any longer to contest with. We don't have all of these server migrations to, con to conduct every few years. We don't have you know, the ma maintenance aspect to ensuring that Starship is continuing to run optimal in your local environment, right? These, um, these expenses that, you know, kind of are really out there and sort of, you know, meandering in, in, in the back end um, are really significantly reduced because, again, everything is being managed um, inside of the uh, Azure environment. And basically, they could just sort of sit back and not have to worry about doing these tasks in Starship any longer. And that's been a huge, huge help for a lot of different businesses that have migrated into the cloud these days already. Um, accessing the different uh, user permissions, right, being able to, you know, uh, provide specific uh, permissions. Uh, and roles to different people in the organization. Um, as you're going to learn more about the cloud, right, we can now offer unlimited users to um, businesses, right? We don't have to charge by a user seat any longer, but these users can give certain permissions to them so they can access specific information and then others may not have that same access um, in the future. So again, very important and making sure that users only can do what they're allowed to do in the application. Um, scalable. This is a solution where you could start very light um, and grow into it over the next you know, several years, right? So you could start as maybe a parcel solution today, end up with LTL, add it on in a few years. Maybe you're going to do something 
uh, with the EDI or things like that. So we can build on this application pretty easily um, and that we're, you know, we can scale that out for the future. And then with all this being said and lower cost and everything else to kind of maintain and run this application, that just means more margin for you in the long run, right? So the revenues are gonna go up, right? We don't have as many expenses running in this uh, environment. We don't have surprise costs, right? Um, with, you know, maybe adding a module or a user, which you'll learn more about here in a minute. Um, so again, you have more margin um, invested. So when we kind of compare the two, right, and this is more of like an illustration and kind of, you know, what we see out there and speaking to a lot of different users um, in the market today. Um, when we look at your on-prem in, uh, infrastructure overall, right, a lot of users kind of look at one particular instance and they look at what maybe they pay for annual maintenance for Starship today. Right. And that's a very small portion of your overall costs. Um, so when you sort of compare what you get off on the left versus the right, right, you'll see it's not a replacement for your maintenance. We're not talking about putting a cloud um, instance in place to just replace your maintenance. We're really talking about a whole application, right, that's going to run truly in the cloud atmosphere at one cost, right, that's going to basically what I like to call all inclusive option, right? So it's going to take everything here on the left. And we're going to say, hey, for this much money um, for every year, um, we're going to include all of our users. We're going to include all of our carriers as, as uh, you move forward. Um, the, the maintenance fees are pretty much gone because they're built into the subscription costs that you're going to pay. Those upgrades that you're paying for uh, you know, to us every single time you run an upgrade are now gone because you're going to get automatic upgrades included with the cloud application. And then any server migrations you may pay us to do those are also going to, you know, not no longer be available because we don't have a new, we don't have a server to migrate to. It's all running in the cloud. So a lot of this stuff all goes away, and you can see here just very conservatively, you know, by doing these few tasks like a maintenance fee, a module purchase, an upgrade, doing it one time a year, which by the way we release new features every month these days. Um, you know, you could be looking at somewhere fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars a year in totality. Um, especially if you have to migrate servers, right? Um, whereas something like in the cloud being very conservative, right? Here, you're gonna get access to all of this that's mentioned really at, you know, big, say starting costs around $5,000, right? Um, and again, it could be lower, it could be a bit higher, but the cloud is all around volume, right? It's how much volume are you shipping, right? But again, you're gonna get access to all of this with no surprises in the end. So when we look at the different features comparing the two applications, right? Again, as I mentioned already, we're going to give you access to all of the carriers, right? You're not paying us $1,500 a module to add in the future, right? Same thing with users. You're not going to pay us $1,200 to add users anymore. That all goes away because you have access to all of that part of the cloud application. Um, you're going to see in a moment kind of our redesigned dashboard analytics tool that is now available, especially if you're running in our desktop environment today by migrating into the cloud you'll have access to the new dashboard with new reports, new feature sets, right? That can really help understand your shipping environment, but more importantly, help maybe negotiate new contracts, maybe help with expansion purposes, things like that. Um, nice thing with the cloud is right off the bat, we give you a 15% discount by just prepaying for the full year like you do today, right? But you're gonna get a 15% incentive for doing so. We do give you the option of going month to month in the cloud environment, but most of our users today prefer to get that discount um, uh, each year as they renew their uh, subscription fees. Um, as I mentioned, you'd get automatic upgrades, right? We don't have to pre-plan anything. They just happen overnight when they get released and pushed out. Um, so when you come in in the morning and log in, it's like nothing's ever happened, right? You're up and running, the business is functional. We don't have to shut it down for a few hours, right? Lose revenue potentially, right? This is all done off hours. Typically, you know, around midnight time frame um, that these all get pushed out, so you have access to it in the following morning. Great for multi-location and multi-company files um, type of setup. So if you are using, you know, three, four location setups today or more, right? This is typical where cloud comes into play, right? Being able to kind of condense everything, have access to it all, right? From a cloud perspective, change locations really easily in the application. Um, definitely something that um, many companies benefit from today. And then the last but not least, our favorite, right, is Starship is always on the latest version. A lot of users and some of you on this call today might be running on some older versions, right, and that's okay. Um, but as any software company will tell you, right, the, the further back you get, 
right, it becomes harder and harder to continue to support, you know, the new features, new technologies that get put out there by the carriers today, right? So we always recommend that you stay up to date on the latest version. The cloud atmosphere allows us to do that, right? Continue to make sure that you are taking advantage of every feature, every benefit that Starship can offer you to continue to grow your business moving forward. So again, what goes into the cloud pricing, right? Everyone's favorite question, right? Um, so again, it really comes down to volume is our main driver here, right? So how many packages are you shipping per month, right? How many LTL shipments are you producing each month if that's applicable to your uh, environment today? Locations does play a, a bit of a role here as well, right? How many locations are, are you looking to set up, you know, Starship inside of? Um, if you're, and then the other piece to this is, couple of the add-ons, right, we call, right? So if you are having hazmat capabilities, we wanna know that, because that can play in a part of the licensing as well, and which plane you need to be a part of. EDI capabilities, same thing, right? EDI is basically available on all of our tiers, except one, our lightest tier. Um, so again, if you do have EDI needs today, and you need them to be carried over and when you move into the cloud, we definitely wanna know that so we can you know, price that out accordingly. And then how many workstations are processing shipments, right? That's also a piece we need to know more from a setup perspective, right? But we want the cloud is basically all around a connector, right? So a connector is loaded onto a machine, right? That's basically um, talking back and forth between that um, uh, Azure environment today. All right. So a couple of things I wanted to point out here um, that you should be aware of, right? So again. For those who are using our desktop application today, right, I want to make it pretty clear, I probably mentioned this in past calls as well, again, we don't have any new features or enhancements in the desktop client today, right? If you're using our web UI, terrific, thank you. Um, that is being supported. You will have all the latest and greatest. Um, if you are using our desktop application, just be aware that if something does go awry, um, that most likely you're going to have to move into the web UI at minimum um, other than the cloud application. So um, it is running on old code. Um, so we don't have that support any longer. We can just make those fixes. So eventually you will have to, to migrate off of that desktop client. Um, <clears throat> annual maintenance fees um, get you access to support, right? To troubleshoot issues only. Um, and this applies again to desktop clients only. Um, so again, you're paying annual maintenance fees, but you're really just paying those to get access you know, uh, to support. Um, you, you still get upgrades, but those upgrades don't have any new bells and whistles loaded onto them um, like the web UI or the cloud applications do. Um, I will make it a point again, do not compare the current maintenance fees to cloud subscription. They're completely two separate op uh, applications. Um, so again, you're paying for a certain limit of features you're getting with your current license compared to a whole solution when you go into the cloud, right? And we'll talk to you more offline and what we mean by that, especially when it's priced out, um, you know, because again, you're really accessing a lot more um, for a certain price um, in which our current on-prem uh, license fees, right, are basically growing at 25 to 30% annual increases, right? So again, going forward, right, we can expect to see those on-prem fees continue to rise pretty significantly as costs keep going up. Um, and, the, you know, the market is calling for obviously more cloud you know applications in the marketplace right that that infrastructure continues to rise so definitely something you want to think about right as you move forward um into, into 2025 and beyond okay um so i want to talk about this real quick um because obviously it's very important um and we don't want anybody to be sort of you know um interrupted especially right at the end of the holiday season um but ups has come back to us um and let us know that they have now set a new deadline, right, for those who haven't authenticated um, with their new OAuth protocols um, as of December 31st. Um, so, which means that you must be on version 2402 or higher um, to be eligible for to, to go through the authentication process. Uh, if you're not on that version, you must upgrade to that version. We're actually right now on 2405 currently. So that would be the version that you would upgrade to. Um, and then you have to be, um, uh, you can migrate to the web UI, which we would highly recommend and, and just having that on the server and you can authenticate through the web UI. There is a desktop um, process as well. If you prefer to do it through the desktop application, you can do it through there as well. Uh, but again, if you're gonna go through this process, you might as well do it with the newest and latest um, 
application that's out there, okay? Or again, you can move to Starship Cloud, right, as a secondary option there, or maybe the primary option and be authenticated right off the get-go, right? So you have two options with UPS. But again, wanna make that call out because that was just brought to our attention late last week. Um, so perfect timing to share with all of you. Um, and then FedEx, people have been asking about the FedEx OAuth because we had mentioned that, you know, they had dates set for uh, end of August. Um, if you haven't heard, they have passed, pushed that out too early to mid 2025. Um, so more information will come uh, as we get it um, from FedEx. Um, so be on the lookout for that as we approach um, you know, early 2025 and what that looks like for you all as well. Okay. All right, so here's where I'm going to turn this over to Stacy to kind of take you through this slide here and talk a little bit about some of the savings that you can all expect to see as you migrate into our cloud application. So Stacy, if you want to take the floor. Sure, thanks everyone. Um, my name is Stacy Sutz. I'm a senior um, product manager for Fitney Bowes for our digital portfolio products. And today what we're going to talk about a little bit is what's called the CEC or Connect e-commerce discounted rates. Um, I'm proud to say that Pitney Bowes is um, an approved um, vendor for the USPS and we are a participant in the program, so we're allowed to offer these discounted rates. Um, within the USPS, there's a number of different rate tiers where retail rate, which are the most expensive um, when you go to the USPS to the counter, to our commercial rates, which are you know, business mailers and such. And then finally, the, the USPS introduced the Connect e-commerce or CEC program a couple of years back and this this program was really designed to aggressively go after a particular set of or type of packages under 20 pounds um, within a uh, within a you know a specific zone and the discounts are really kind of they vary from um, as you can see from the chart they vary by weight and by zone um, but they can be anywhere if we're talking against um, retail rates they can be up to 80 percent off retail rates but most mailers, we're usually comparing them to like the commercial rates, which are, you know, uh, about 20, 25%, 20, 25% off. Um, the rates are extremely aggressive um, and they are they compete directly with, uh, I'll say the USPS um, products as well. So the one of the things that's really interesting about the Connect e-commerce program is there are no minimum volume requirements. So if you're shipping just one package a year or five packages a week, there's no requirements for you to meet any kind of um, minimum volume um, with USPS. Um, you can just ship them and you'll get the rates. The other thing that's really important to understand too, the USPS has different um, types of rates that are available. They have your weight and your zone rates, and they also have what's called cubic rating. And cubic rating is, I like to say it's its a really dimensional rating. Um, I, it's, if I had to explain it, there are packages that can fit underneath um, the, the post person's arm when they're delivering it, right? So there's smaller, denser packages. But with those particular rates, up to um, 70 pounds in, on, on, on ground advantage, um, you can pay the same rate. It's all based on the volume. So if the package is a smaller, dense package and it's going to zone four and it's 25, 50 pounds, um, it's gonna be the same rate as, as a one pound package. The beauty of the software is that, or of working with Penny Bowes is when you pass in the dimensions of the of the package, we'll look at both rate cards and determine which is cheaper. So it's nothing you have to make a decision for, nothing you have to write, um, you know, any type of business rule for. It's all done on its own. The other piece of uh, that's kind of nice with working with USPS on the CEC program, um, that there's no accessorial charges, there's no fuel surcharges, um, priority mail, it's basically with two two types of products, Priority Mail, Priority Mail Express, and also the Ground Advantage products. So it doesn't roll over into you know the media mails and all the different things. There's no work share program, nothing you have to do. Basically just send in the where the package is going and the dimensions, and we'll find out what the best rate is for you and send it back to you. Um, the other thing that's really kind of interesting um, for clients who you know perhaps were doing uh, postal manifesting or, or EVS before, um, with some of the different changes that just happened this past August, and a lot of people aren't aware, but the USPS has kind of changed the way that they look at packages and audit packages coming out. And one of the things that can happen when you're doing EVS is you can have a package that is, 
perhaps uh, you print a label for it, but it's unmanifested, it's not in there. And with the changes that happened um, with the USPS just recently in August, those packages are subject to seizure by the USPS. So working with Pitney Bowes as a trusted partner um, with the USPS, um, we have a mailing, we'll call it a mailer status, a trusted mailer status with USPS. So our packages are not being seized. Um, they're still being checked for, you know, to make sure that the, the, the postage is applied and any adjustments to the postage would happen automatically to your account. But um, there's, there's not that risk of package seizures or, you know, order you're sending out being delayed by the USPS because there was some sort of a mistake on a, a label that was printed and perhaps not funded properly or something like that. So we do handle that. Um, Benny Bowes is, would basically um, handle all the payment to the USPS. So there's no direct payment to the USPS that you have to do. You pay Pitney Bowes. There's a number of different flexible payment options that we have on how you want to pay from prepay um, to uh, reserve accounts, line of credits, credit cards, and however you, you, you want to, you know, whatever works best for you. And we, we really want to make it easy for you to do this. So we have a number of different clients on this, and it's something that we work with continuously with USPS. We handle all the compliance. We handle any type of uh, changes that need to be made to the USPS um, labels, that type of thing. So really, there's nothing more that you need to do is just put in the package um, dimensions and and, the, and where it's going, and we'll handle the rest for you. And you can be assured that it'll be a, a certified label that's coming out, and the package will go through the USPS. And if it, for some reason the package was weighed wrong or dimensions were incorrect, we handle the APV part of it and adjust your account accordingly after the fact. So there's really nothing for you to do, no risk. But the discounts are, are pretty um, substantial. Um, the rate changes, as I said, we do see um, rate changes a couple of times a year with it, um, and they don't always go up. They go down um, very often. It all really depends. The USPS is trying to be very, very nimble and agile with the, C, the Connect e-commerce CEC program and being super competitive on a, on a rate base, um, uh, a package of package rates. So if you see an increase or decrease in, in one carrier, they're gonna come at that and, and try and beat them by a little bit. So, but as you can see, you know, there's the, the rates are looking at the rate chart. You know, we're looking at a comparison against just basic uh, commercial rates and there's a substantial decrease in this. Um, so based on what your, pro, your package profile is, you know, the, I'll, I'll say the, the smaller packages, the, the volume, where the volume, the cubic volume is, is less than 0.5 um, and under 20 pounds. That's really the sweet, pot, sweet spot of, of these rates. And um, I, I, it's, I think it's a great opportunity. We have um, thousands of clients that are using this right now, and we partner closely with USPS and handle everything for you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Stacy, and appreciate that. And and yeah, just to, to tag on on, on to what Stacy had mentioned for those of you who are already using um, Post Office today with Starship um, on your on-prem application, right? The, the, this chart is really showing you the savings that could be had um, by getting these rates um, tied into your account when you do move into the cloud application um, today with Starship. So there's some pretty significant savings there to help reduce that transportation spend that you might have today. So appreciate that info, Stacey. All right, so just to kind of move along um, and talk a little bit about, you know, just to kind of show you, as I mentioned here, um, with our cloud application, you do have access to um, a revamped dashboard, reports, um, some analytical tools here that really help understand your overall um, business and where it's kind of going. Um, things like a heat map or distribution map of plotting your shipments across the country, um, showing you some hot zones, right, where you might not be shipping any product, maybe opening up new markets for you. But there's a lot of information here that you can really study that information that, you know, you may not have access to today or relying on the carrier to still supply it to you, right? You know, the, you don't have to look really far. You can run these really every day, every month, whatever you prefer um, to really get those, uh, that information that you're looking for. Um, to help you really, um, you know, improve that, you know, supply chain and kind of keep those costs to a minimum uh, overall. And in line with that, right, we do have, if you're not using it today, we have, again, our e-notify application, right, which can send out these, you know, notifications and you can customize various templates within the application to send out to your customer and give them the information that they may be looking for, 
you know, with information like tracking information, PO, whatever you prefer um, in here, you can customize this template pretty quickly um, and get this out to your customer in real time at the end of the day, whatever you prefer, but um, definitely much better than if you're manually doing it today. We, you know, will recommend you to kind of take a look at this since it's all part of your subscription as well. So um, kind of leading me to sort of like, you know, what's next, right? And kind of, you know, if you're interested in, in kind of speaking to us further and investigating the cloud solution a little bit and maybe looking at, you know, taking advantage of those discounts that, you know, Stacy was talking about, right? What do we look for, right? So we're going to start off really having kind of a, a discovery call and you'll meet with your account manager that's been assigned um, to your account and they'll kind of ask you some questions, uh, get some information together. Um, just ensure that this is the right fit for you, the right path to move forward with. Um, we can always schedule a demo of the application, right? Because again, if you're using our desktop application, the look and feel of cloud is gonna look a little different for you. Nothing crazy, but um, it's just formatted onto one page essentially. Uh, but we can definitely review a demo with you, show you the integration, how it all comes together. Um, and then we'll move into more of a quoting phase, right? Provide you kind of pricing, what this all looks like from a, from a cloud perspective, um, and then kind of, you know, moving into a commitment phase um, and then kind of getting you onto our calendar, right? Getting you implemented as quickly as we can. So that way you can start taking advantage of some of these savings as well um, here for the holiday season. That's that you may want to be interested in. So again, thank you to everyone for joining. We appreciate the time and uh, we hope to speak to you soon. Take care.